Welcome everyone to the uh, PhD in Historic Preservation virtual open house. We're delighted that you could all join for this and really appreciative of the, of the time that, that uh, you've devoted to thinking about the program. We're super excited about your interest in the program. We, uh, we are here as a faculty uh, to tell you a little bit about the program. So I'm Jorge Otero Pailos. I'm the director of the program. And I'm joined by uh, Erica Avrami. Um, Hello. Uh, who's a member of the PhD faculty and Professor Lola Benalon. As Hello, well. everyone. Hi. And also Sarah Grace Godwin, who is our assistant director of the preservation program. And so now you're all joining from different places and, uh, and so on. So many of you have reached out and we've had some emails back and forth. Um, we're not gonna go around the room to introduce each other. We're, we, 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 we're gonna, we, we will have time for questions where we have an hour to, um uh for this and uh we want to just familiarize you with, with the um with the program and familiarize you a little bit with us as faculty and make plenty of time for you to ask all the questions that you that you would like now the first question i have for you is can you see my shared screen everybody can see that okay fantastic well that's that's already uh half the battle. Um, so let us dive right in. We're, uh, the PhD program in historic preservation is cited, um, you know, is at Columbia and some of you might have been in the school. Some of you have never been here, but this is the main, um, the main quadrangle of, of Columbia University. And within that, this big blue arrow points to Avery Hall. And this is the the center, let's say, of the school, but the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation is actually spread over um, four buildings. And so the preservation PhD is, is really housed in the Preservation Technology Lab, which is in Shermerhorn Hall. It's the building uh, next to it. And the Preservation Technology Lab serves teaching and advanced research on the preservation of building materials through a constantly evolving myriad of analog and digital technologies. And as part of its mission, the lab encourages awareness of and creative approaches to preservation technology as a means to bring about meaningful cultural, social, political, and ecological change in the built environment. And so we achieve this through facilitating interdisciplinary doctoral and master's level research. We also host visiting scholars. Often they're either working on their PhD or their, their postdoctoral uh, scholars or professors that come in and, and spend some time with us. And we promote dialogues between leading preservationists, architects, artists, engineers, creative technologists, and scientists in the lab. Uh, the lab is also the repository for an extensive collection of building materials and fragments uh, of historic buildings that are used uh, by faculty and students in teaching and research. Uh, and it's a collection that is uh, searchable online and that it, you, know, you, can, you can have access to as well. Um, the PhD program uh, in preservation was launched in 2017 and is oriented towards the training of future historic preservation scholars. Um, it is the first of its kind in the United States. And so it aims to, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, it aims to expand the discipline's range of intellectual engagements and also to cultivate new paradigms of scholarly research, experimental practice, global action, policy, uh, and communication. Um, so the, the doctoral program underscores a historical understanding of the disciplines evolving challenges and purposes. And we, we want to promote theoretical speculation, design speculation, policy speculation, material speculation, 
on alternative modes of practice suited to deal with the ethical, technical, aesthetic, and social problems of our time. So we are looking for candidates who can engage with critical and scholarly culture uh, and become the next leaders of the discipline. Um, we, candidates uh, are expected to conduct independent research uh, with support from the preservation's faculty's wide range of expertise. Uh, and in, in that uh, preservation research is, is really something that we want to support. So we are looking for different, um, um, for, for independent projects. You are all going to each in your applications propose a project, but we also um, want to be very intentional about the kinds of projects that we are um, soliciting this year. We admit one student per year, and uh, this particular year, we're putting out a call for uh, for that kind of, for a particular kind of research, we're gonna tell you a little bit more about it in a second. So uh, part of the research that you would be doing is taking advantage of all of the different um, components of the you know, research capacities of the, of the school. A major part of it is Avery Library. So um, that is another side where uh, our PhD students are engaging deeply with our archives and, and it has a, a, an incredible uh, collection of both original drawings and, and um, uh, objects and also um, limited edition historical books going, going back centuries. And also, uh, very importantly, one of the connections of the uh, preservation um, PhD is with the Natural Materials Lab, which is directed by Professor Lola Benalon, who serves on the PhD in Preservation uh, Committee. So I will let uh, Professor Benalon tell you a little bit more about, about the lab and, and its intersections with the uh, Preservation Technology Lab as well. Thank you, Jorge. Um, so a few words about the Natural Materials Lab that is joining in conversation and collaboration with um, the uh, Historic Preservation Lab. Um, um, the lab was founded in 2020, 2020 three years ago, um, uh, to investigate raw, geogenic, biogenic, earth-based, fiber-based materials, uh, their life cycles, supply chains, and policy, but also fabrication techniques, mixed designs, um, and upscaled possibilities. Uh, there are uh, several research product, projects and teaching um, courses that um, are affiliated with the Natural Materials Lab um, with the goal to craft uh, new ways to imagine and invent socially equitable um, and ecologically sustainable futures. Um, and the work here converges of uh, several fields, including material design, material sciences from micro scale to structural scale, geology, geography and material geographies and supply chains, architectural design, civil engineering, including structural and thermal um, uh, behaviors of materials and assemblies, and also art and experimental design. There are approximately between to ten, between ten to fifteen research students, interns, and assistants at the lab each uh, term. Um, and uh, the goal and idea is to um, uh, have the natural materials lab as a resource uh, with our material testing and fabrication possibilities as part of the historic preservation uh, PhD program. Yes, and Jorge, back, back, back to you. Yeah, I think this is a really good segue for us to um, talk a little bit about the, you know, how the rest of the faculty fits into this. Um, so the, the PhD faculty um, includes uh, uh, all the people that you see on the screen 
right now. Um, and each of us has a different um, area of expertise and focus. So um, obviously Lola, who directs the Natural Materials Lab, uh, you know, the, the Natural Materials Lab also is part of that, uh, part of your research and, and that focus. So I'll, I want to turn the uh, microphone over to Erica, who talk a little bit about her, her work as well. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Erica Rami. I've been part of the GSAP faculty now for mm, almost 10 years uh, and very excited that there's such an interest uh, in the PhD program. Um, my research really looks at historic preservation through the lens of social justice and climate uh, adaptation. And so it involves more social science-based research, looking at community-engaged methodologies for how we adapt um, and promote resilience within communities, but also uh, uh, looking at um, qualitative and some quantitative analyses of how we think about distributive justice, how questions of um, historic buildings in relationship to climate uh, create benefits, as well as sometimes challenges for disparate communities and how we as preservationists can address these challenges uh, and uh, on the horizon through public policy. Um, I think on the screen here, it talks about a, a program that I've been running, the Urban Heritage Sustainability and Social Inclusion Initiative, which has produced a series of volumes um, around some of these issues that I've just been discussing. Uh, but uh, my work also intersects a bit with Lola. I'm in at the moment in Ghana, um, where I'm teaching a studio uh, where we've traveled with students to Ghana focused on earth and architecture. Um, and we're looking at the role of this traditional and ubiquitous form of um, construction material and the ways in which uh, systems of colonization, um, uh, religious transfer uh, and devaluing of earth and architecture has affected the ability for for people to transmit this constructive culture across generations. So uh, in that sense, my social science interests and my climate interests also intersect at um, around earth and architecture. Great, thank you, Erica. And um, uh, I can tell you a little bit of my, about my work um, as well. So I was trained as an architect and um, a, uh, a historian, and I practice uh, in preservation, in experimental preservation, uh, where I take uh, artistic methodologies and uh, technologies to really critically inquire about the aspects of preservation that um, might be overlooked by the larger, let's say, institutional, established, authorized frameworks in the in the field. So very much as you've seen in the rest of the faculty, um, the critical approach that we each take varies differently, uh, depending on 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 our methodologies. But they're all very complementary. And in my practice, you know, I'm uh, tend to be very hands on, uh, but also through the hands on and design. Uh, aspect of working on particular sites, trying to develop an, uh, that process as an inquiry that raises questions that then can be leading to larger scholarly um, um, and more traditional archival, historical, theoretical research. So really bringing together theory and practice that way through a critical engagement and hands-on engagement with materials and, and materiality, with constituencies and communities that are associated with those materialities. Um, because every site has a community uh, that, is, that is related to it. So working very closely with, with the stakeholders and the, um, and the stewards of sites uh, to, to carry out that, that work. Um, of experimental preservation. 
Um, other members of our faculty uh, that are not here today are Mabel Wilson and Lucia Ale. Mabel Wilson is an architect and a historian uh, who is, uh, leads the um, uh, African and American African Diasporic Studies uh, and is director of the Institute of Research in African American Studies. Uh, she also co-directs the Global Africa Lab. Uh, she, is, uh, she has an active practice where she has also uh, uh, worked on uh, memorials uh, like the UVA Memorial to the Enslaved to Enslaved People, she's also um, has an active installation practice where she has uh, recent. She currently has a uh, an installation at the Venice Art Biennial. Um, she uh, is also a scholar and has been writing uh, actively on on African American experience and how it is um, spatialized through architecture and has been, uh, um, especially in the 19th and 20th century. Uh, and so very critically engaged in, in questions of memory and heritage through that lens. Uh, Lucia Ale is a historian and she is um, the director of the Buell Center for American Architecture. She is an uh, expert on uh, the history of international preservation institutions such as UNESCO and wrote a book called Designs of Des Destruction. Uh, and so she comes at it more from a historical lens and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and unpacking the various um, intersections between the building of uh, heritage institutions and various geopolitical um, realities, especially of the post-war, but also she gets into the interwar period as well. Um, so that's to give you a sense of the faculty in the program, in the preservation program. But there, at Columbia, we also have a much larger PhD faculty that uh, intersect in various ways with the work that our students in preservation do. So just just to give you a very you know quick quick overview, of, we can talk about each of these people separately if you have questions. And then of course there's a very uh, large historic preservation faculty that works with our students, that works in the lab, some of them do, and, and some of them are, are not working in the lab, but with whom you will have also um, a conversation. There are also at Columbia various research centers and institutes, and we certainly encourage you to look into these as you prepare your application, because we are going to want to know what you want to work on and who you would think might help you in that research best and what resources we have at Columbia that would help you carry that research out. And these institutes and centers are certainly part of the, part of the capacity of the university to help you. Um, obviously, we talked about the, the preservation technology in the natural materials labs as really the anchor points for that, for that research. So um, we're gonna go into the outline of the program real quick. Um, it is a fully funded program. So um, the program, it, you get a stipend, you get a, um, you get tuition exemption. So the, the uh, you, you get paid essentially to come and, and work on that research here. Um, the program is a five-year program of which the first two years are spent really developing your, uh, your project, taking classes. You will be taking a uh, preservation PhD colloquium once a year in those two years plus other doctoral re, uh, research colloquia and seminars at GSAP. Your third year is a year that is spent on, uh, and I don't know if I remember, yeah, there are, your third year is a year where you're gonna be taking the qualifying exam. So these are the, these are the uh, exams that basically uh, certify that you've taken all the requirements and that you um, uh, have a command of the discipline and there's a major and a minor exam. 
And then in that third year as well, you present your dissertation proposal, your official dissertation proposal. Then over the following two years, you write and execute that dissertation. So that's the five years. So all this to say that we fully expect that you're coming in with a dissertation proposal now that is going to change after the two years you spend in our school and that on that third year, you're really going to fully flesh out what you what you try to do. So, so you can you can in your proposal as you write your proposal for the for admission, you can say that you might see this research developing in this or that direction in relationship to this or that lab or institutional you know center or faculty member. We encourage you to identify you know, what faculty members you would be interested to, to work with. Um, and your advisor should come from the um, uh, PhD in preservation faculty, but you don't have to choose an advisor until that third year. So you can work with everyone in the program and then at that third year, you're going to choose the advisor. Um, these are just some of the general requirements after that third year you 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 pass those exams you get the master of uh, mphil master of philosophy that allows you that makes you all but dissertation that's where you go to those uh two final years of the program and there's also a language requirement this is because many people are working internationally and you know there is that you have to have one extra language apart from from english so um, now that we've covered the requirements and we've covered the, um, uh, the length of the program, we want to tell you a little bit more about th um, the kind of research proposals that we are encouraging this year. So uh, all candidates have to have a background in historic preservation, so either a master's in historic preservation or have related knowledge for a number of years, either in the field or in academia that, that qualifies them uh, with as having a background in historic preservation. So that's number one, that's very important for everyone to, to consider that. Um, uh, and, and secondly, we uh, again have one position and we are very um, intentional about the kind of research that we, um, encourage every year. But that doesn't mean that if your research falls out of that, you cannot apply. Um, you may also apply with a, with a, let's say, different dissertation proposal, but just for you to be aware that this is what we're looking for um, this year and what we are um, uh, uh, really seeking in a uh, PhD candidate. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Professor uh, Ben Alon to tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, thank you, Jorge. So um, this year, um, the PhD in Historic Preservation at GSAP is uh, especially seeking candidates who can um, propose um, a project that bridges experimental preservation technologies and material design research to develop um, a dissertation, a doctoral project that addresses pressing contemporary environmental and social issues and challenges. We especially seek candidates who will utilize different methodologies from the range of facilities uh, we have um, <clears throat> from the fields of preservation, art, architecture, science, and technology. Um, candidates will have the opportunity here to cultivate a scholarly dialogue across history and theory of preservation technology, but also building physics and social sciences. As you heard of all our, um, all of the backgrounds of the professors who, um, uh, who will be, who are part of the program. Um, a deep focus on natural, Local, low carbon and bio-based materials like earth, stone, um, etc., is highly desirable this year. 
um, and the research topic will ideally not only address environmental urgencies in the face of climate change, but will also critically interrogate societal impacts related to marginalized communities, resource scarcity, and land use. Um, we hope that the candidate will have um, uh, will we'll take uh, advantage of access to a wide range of scholarly resources within and outside GSAP, um, um, including research faculty and facilities, specifically the Preservation Technology Lab and the Natural Materials Lab will um, provide valuable opportunities for hands-on experience and access to testing tools for various materials, scales, and experimental setups. Um, this would uh, include conducting research experiments uh, and developing installations and demonstrations uh, ranging from micro scale to macro and building scales. Um, lastly, the ideal candidate for this program should, uh, especially this year, um, have a background in preservation and proficiency in academic writing, um, conducting experimental setups, and a solid understanding of how to integrate historical research with a critical perspective on fabrication and preservation. Um, the program highly encourages and supports research collaborations with schools from other institutions as Jorge showed in the slide with the different labs, centers and facilities in and outside GSAP. Uh, and we also encourage active participation in international conferences and workshops, of course. Um, so these are the main um, um, uh, points that we were hoping to emphasize this year for candidates who are interested in applying. Thank you, Lola. So why don't we turn it over to questions? Um, so uh, from from those of you that that are in attendance, um, it's a lot we just put on the table. So uh, please go ahead. Yeah. You can either just raise your hand with a Zoom or you can just, um, um, you know, jump right in. Hello. I guess. Uh, oh, oops. sorry. You should go, Kaya. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Kaya Kerner. Um, it's very nice to be here. It's very nice to hear about the program. I've been, you know, following this program for a while, the work of Jorge, and it's really nice to hear um, work being done kind of in relation to um, materiality. Um, I guess I'm curious if you could just uh, just summarize that once again. So it's really having to do with um, like prototyping biomaterials and and social aspects, the the project focus. I I, I can answer that Jorge. So so the 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 project may the projects that uh, proposed may range um, from different um, scales, geographies, localities, and materials. Um, the prototypes is 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 can certainly part of an experimental setup, um, um, and it can be offered in a range of scales. Um, and I think what would be really interesting for us is to see how such prototypes or suggestions for uh, prototypes can be. <clears throat> um, contextualized within a within a an, an argument or a, a a context study or a certain um, topic that may include several case studies of course um, and then culminated through a, a, a combination of material prototyping and preservation and experimental preservation um, and can even conclude in a um, a certain uh, project or hands-on project or installation or integration with the community or a, 
uh, a series of, de of demonstrations. So it's very open. Um, Thank yeah. you. So to, to add to that a little bit, you know, um, clearly we want you to take advantage of the resources of the Preservation Technology Lab, of the Natural Materials Lab, and to think through how you're going to engage with preservation through those resources and thinking about uh, the design process of the design of materials, the materials that are to be used for preservation um, as an inquiry, not simply as solving a, a problem, but as a, as a method of unpacking, of, of opening up critical questions in the discipline of preservation. So part of what we're looking for when we read your applications is a sense that you understand the discourse of preservation. You, what is your position within the preservation field? Um, how do you situate yourself in the whole of the, you know, of the preservation enterprise? That is what that is a major part of what we're looking for, uh, and then how is your you know intended engagement with materials and materiality a way of of fully more fully articulating and in, inquiring into what you feel is relevant, important, and urgent in the field, and what is missing from the field, because a dissertation is a contribution to the field. So you need to also articulate to some degree, why would you wanna do this? What is missing? You know, how has this not been covered already? So having a sense that, that you understand um, what came before you and, and, and you have a position vis-a-vis -vis that and a sense that of, of, of your, the urgency of your contribution um, is very important for us. So you, you should definitely um, articulate that and of course we want to know why you are the person you know what have what 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 you've done so far your experiences your you know how you came to this point how you came to this question uh where are you in your life right now that makes it such that 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 you would really benefit from this but the discipline also needs you to do this work right like um that's something that your statement really should flesh out um as Erica do you want to add to that I just need to um I, you know I, I think that you said it well Jorge I mean part of what we uh are looking for is that capacity to be a self-directed researcher because a PhD program really is about learning how to become a better researcher um, as well as an educator. And so, you know, being invested in avenues of inquiry that whether they're strictly material or, you know, bridging across the social sciences, um, experimental design, materiality, scientific research, et cetera, um, your capacity to really think innovatively uh, and creatively toward um those kinds of interrogations other questions hello my name is amani i have um a pretty logistical question so given the self-directed nature of the program and the relatively low amount of um very specific required coursework if an applicant were already enrolled in a program at GSAP and they had relevant coursework and they were able to be in the program, is there a way that that relevant coursework could apply towards the credits of the program and perhaps make the um, five, like grad, have the program take less than five years? Or would that either A, just be unlikely given how relevant the coursework would need to be? Um, or is that just not allowed and you would need to start from zero with their, with their credits? Yeah, um, you would need to start from zero is the short answer. Um, we expect that everyone has 
a master's uh, degree. Uh, and so they, everyone will have taken courses that are relevant to the program or even very close to the requirements of the program. But, uh, but the, the requirements of the PhD colloquium, which are the core requirements and the number of credits uh, for the coursework are really meant to give you a chance to take full advantage of the luxury that it is to take this time to develop your research. So we want that, um, you know, that time to, 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 to let these ideas uh, develop and you should take advantage of that. So, so it's, it's really something that we, uh, we encourage you to, to, to take advantage of, really. Am Amani, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Are you at GSEP now? I am not. Oh, you're not. Okay. Uh, Anna? Yeah. Hi, everyone. And thank you for this introduction. Yeah. And I'm Anna Yu. And now I'm working as a new media artist and yeah, working a lot on the cultural heritage part. And I have worked for two years as a fellow at the uh, Department of History of Art and Architecture at Harvard. Uh, and I had a Mark II from Yale, so a little bit from my background. And I wanna see uh, the potential focus of the PhD students that you are considering. Like, do you consider candidates who are interested to combine preservation, climate material, uh, with art and media technology, like other technologies besides material, like design, photogrammetry, and putting all these things together and use art and media as a way to inquire. Lola, do you want to answer that? Yeah, that, that's a that's a great question. Thank you, Anna. Um, of course, when we say materials uh, um, and um, indicating the opportunities um, possible in the uh, preservation technology lab and the natural materials lab, um, invite for hands-on, tactile um, um, uh, work with materials in an experimental and uh, um, empirical ways, but it's not exclude, of course, other means of experiment, uh, exper experimental preservation uh, technologies that may include a range of other mediums, um, 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 including, of course, uh, media, data, um, um, and, 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 and avenues towards other scientific inquiries of experimental preservation. So um, this can certainly be um, a really interesting and viable part of the proposal. And then um, again, going back to the three uh, resources, the Avery Library as a place to argument, argument your research and contextualize it in the history of and theory of preservation technology, and then the preservation technology lab uh, with the material library and the um, um, tools and equipment and the natural materials lab with the strong emphasis on raw, low carbon and uh, material resiliency. Um, think about how these can be weaved together with your interest in media and and um, and and art and design, and definitely um, um, can be some sounds like um, additional realms can be weaved uh, within these. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna also share for those of you that. Uh, here, um, I want to share the uh, the page for our current PhD students, so you can see the kinds of you know projects that they've been working on. And again, they're each very um, different, so that also gives you a sense of where you know the cohort and the people you you know that would be your your um, in the program with you, your class not classmates, but your cohort. Yeah. Jorge, there's also a question in the chat. Oh, okay. 
Uh, okay, so from Mohammed Hossein, could we research and work on urban heritage and urban historic preservation in this PhD program? I'd say yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and there could be ways in which uh, you could examine um, the urban environment through a material lens. And there's so many ways in which that could be articulated. And, and we are very interested and in also, I mean, that immediately raises the question of scaling. So when you're working on a particular um, research project about you know, material design, questions of provenance, where are these materials coming from? How are these materials deployable in a contemporary setting at a large uh, scale? Where would they be needed? Um, and many of these questions of adapting to climate change, of course, intersect with these, with these uh, when you begin to think about urban scale. Um, we encourage you to take a look at some of the uh, work that uh, Professor Abrami has done on this subject as well. Uh, and the research initiatives that she's been leading and overlapping with these questions of the existing built environment. So these are new and innovative ways to think about the urban, the built environment um, that are not necessarily just limited to the heritage designation of a portion of that environment. Maybe Erica, you wanna uh, chime in on yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so part of what we're looking at uh, through a collaboration with the climate school, the existing built environment earth network is how uh, we oftentimes segregate the built environment as you know new construction and then this stuff called uh you know heritage or historic preservation so that there's this big gap in between of the existing built environment lots of existing buildings all of which in an era of climate change will need to be retrofitted and adapted in different ways um, communities may need to um, migrate as well. And so uh, I think some of the things that Lola and I have talked about um, in the context of this, Lola is part of this network, um, is how do we look to um, the use of, of natural materials or low carbon materials, oftentimes derived from vernacular or historic traditions um, and scale them up for uh, retrofitting in low carbon ways so that the embodied carbon involved in retrofitting buildings um, and adapting buildings is minimized. Uh, and so you could look at that uh, at an individual kind of building level. You could look at that at a material level. But uh, as Jorge said, we oftentimes, you know, still need to scale this up because just retrofitting or just adapting one building isn't going to get us to uh, a place that meets the challenge of decarbonization. So thinking about ways in which we can uh, uh, implement, you know, it both um, develop and implement practices across entire communities, for example, or phasing uh, within communities or certain building typologies or um, you know, within certain kinds of construction materials. Um, all of those take us to a more systemic level that is represented or, or sort of a, a critical characteristic of the urban um, context that it represents uh, a sort of systemic built environment um, question around historic preservation and its intersection with climate as well as social justice. <laughs> okay. I see uh, Mohammed Hussein has said thank you on the chat. So other, other questions? Um, okay, I see Jayin, thank you very much for your introduction, gave me some basic information. In addition to the information you presented, I'd like to know what the annual enrollment number is. 
So it is one. The annual enrollment number is one candidate. So we admit one person per year. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, feel free to just jump in. We have a, a, a couple more minutes. Uh, oh, why just one candidate? That, uh, well, that is what we have funding for. So we, uh, these are fully funded positions. And so that's, that's our, Erica, did you wanna jump in? I just wanted to um, add to that, uh, that even though it's one candidate in this particular doctoral program, you are among other uh, doctoral students within the Graduate School of Architecture and within the university writ large. Uh, and that there are opportunities to pursue inquiries beyond the architecture school. Um, there are even opportunities to take courses within a network of universities associated uh, or, or in the geographic area of New York City. Um, if there's a course that you're particularly interested in as a doctoral student, you're allowed to petition to take that course at NYU or at Rutgers. Um, so while it's just one student, you have an opportunity to network with, meet, um, and engage with lots of other doctoral students. Yeah, so you'll be in a in a real. Um, uh, it's a really amazing place because you have this very robust and very rich uh, PhD research community at GSEP. I think it's quite unique. Um, you know, really, uh, certainly in the United States, but uh, I think everywhere, you know, that there is a, there's a very large cohort of PhD students and everybody really informs each other and participates in events together. And, and there's a very, you know, lively dialogue happening about, uh, about the research in all these various fields together at the PhD level. And of course, there's also the, Amer uh, the uh, Italian Academy at Columbia University invites postdoctoral researchers in preservation every year. So these are senior figures in historic preservation that come and with whom our PhD students have dialogues. There's a seminar that is um, held over there um, that our PhD students can participate in. So that's also part of the, you know, all these institutions and centers and, and uh, that we have at Columbia. On, we're very fortunate to have a very robust preservation um, uh, set of set of um, uh, institutional capacities so and people because ultimately it just it comes down to people <laughs> um, uh, we'll take one this one last question uh, uh, from Anna uh, could thesis be related to a specific real preservation project? And do you consider international topics involving other countries like China or the EU? Um, Erica, do you want to take this? Could we, yeah. could we, would we, yeah. Um, certainly uh, a, uh, a dissertation could be associated with a specific site or a specific project, but um, what we want to encourage you to do is really be um, digging deeply into a set of research questions that allow you to contextualize a particular site within a broader um, theoretical inquiry uh, and to allow a particular case, for example, to be generalizable in some way, right, as a form of research. Uh, and so um, you can certainly, you know, focus on other countries. We have doctoral students right now who are looking at um, digital documentation histories in various parts of the world. Another who's looking at um, a post-disaster heritage recovery in various parts of the world. So I, I don't see that as a as an issue. Um, but 
um, a project itself is not a dissertation, right? We we it's a we want you to to really be thinking about um, your dissertation as a substantive uh, research effort. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Um, well, I see Kaya has her their hand up. Kaya, do you want to jump in real quick? Um, yes. I know you said it was the last question, but I just wanted to um, just ask one more. In terms of having a background in historic preservation, if a candidate doesn't necessarily have, for example, a degree, but has, I know I know you mentioned experience being kind of qualifying you for the program. So for example, working on an excavation or having a background in heritage management, does that um, apply to that kind of uh, requirement? Yes, that would. Yep. And and that is spelled out in the uh in, in the page on the GSAPP webpage on the PhD program that, that, that states the requirements for, for entry, the qualifications necessary for entry. So definitely if you if you have a, a previous degree in preservation or relevant experience in the field, um then then that that qualifies you. Perfect. Thank Good. you. Okay. Well, we are very grateful that you all attended the virtual open house and very excited that you're interested in the PhD program. So thank you so much. Uh, we are available for questions as you developed your, your, your proposals and your applications. Please do reach out and let us know. Um, we encourage you also, we didn't talk about it so much, but we encourage you to um, obtain good letters of recommendation from folks who have PhD backgrounds so they can speak to your ability as a, as a PhD candidate. So um, uh, consider that as you think about who you're going to ask to write letters of recommendation. Uh, but we're just really thrilled that you joined us and, and very excited to, um, to continue this conversation with each of you and to read your applications uh, in, due in due course. Okay. So thank you so much. <laughs>